How's it going, you sexy beasts? As we all wind down from our amazing weekend, it's time to answer some of the most prominent questions you badasses have been asking. First and foremost, though, what's planned for this week of content starting the 14th of April? Well, I'm glad you asked, Rathamus. Tomorrow is going to be pretty busy. I'll be editing the next episode of Fireteam Awesome tonight, and that should be up by tomorrow evening. Also, tomorrow I will be recording for the amalgamation of Planetside 2 YouTubers and one massive squad, so expect to see that either later in the week or this weekend. I've got another gameplay guide for Diablo 3 planned, as well as a video to showcase everything behind the scenes, just so you guys can see what all goes into making a video for my channel on YouTube. This includes all the programs I use, what settings, the steps I take, and all that fancy jazz. Anyway, let's step into what you're all here for, the questions and answers. I'd also like to preemptively state that I'm so very sorry if I mispronounce the crap out of your name. First off, Edwin Rose asks, what do you think of the underbarrel shotgun and what do you think should be improved? Also, should all assault rifles have the ability to have underbarrel shotgun attachments or underbarrel attachments? Well, first off, the underbarrel shotgun is kind of underwhelming. I really wish that the underbarrel shotgun would become more like the Master Key in the Call of Duty series where you had about three shots or so, but it was a pump action shotgun instead of just one shot and you're done. I think it'd be really cool. The ability to have underbarrel launchers on all rifles though, I'm not so sure about. I kind of would prefer them just to be on the long ranged ones instead of all around. Since if somebody had a GD7F or the upcoming Lynx revamp and they had a grenade launcher on that or a shotgun or something even more stupid like that, I would be kind of pissed. So I kind of like them where they are now with just the weapons that they're allowed. I think they could broaden it just a little bit instead of one weapon per weapon type. But I think it would pretty neat, be pretty neat if we could have an ACX-11 or something like that with the shotgun on it. Just when you go into close quarters, you don't have to swap to your pistol or anything like that. Jack Gould asks, would you rather have a Max from Planetside 2 or a Titan from Titanfall? I would much prefer a Titan from Titanfall. They're much more maneuverable, they're much more sleek, they're a hell of a lot bigger, and they can do a lot more than just shoot the crap out of people. I think I would personally prefer a Strider variant Titan from Titanfall that I could just go to work with or run down the street or smash some cars with. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Currently, the Max is in Planetside, just shoot the shit out of people. Woo! <laughs> Bennett McCray asks, what's your favorite kind of dipping sauce? Barbecue sauce all the way. I'm pretty much boring with that. I put on everything though. It's delicious as hell. Gigapro asks, what do you think of the current state of Planetside 2 development? I don't know honestly. We don't know how many people are working on SOE. Well, we, there's a lot of people working at SOE, but they have a lot of stuff to cover. They've got Dragon's Prophet, but EverQuest Next, which I think is their next big project that they're trying to focus on entirely. They have the newly announced H1Z1. And I think Planet Side 2 right now is kind of on the back burner. It's more so let's keep trying to get a profit off of it while also making sure it doesn't suck. But I don't think a lot of devotion is on it right now. The big thing with the bugs and the old weekly patches now. I believe they got rid of their QA team a long time ago. They still state that they have one, but who knows. Just get on the PTS, find bugs, report them, let's get them out of the way so when the patches come out, they'll be great. Yeah. Curse Load asks, which TR weapon is your favorite? How much do you sleep per night? Favorite TR weapon by far has got to be the Saber 13. That two round burst and 167 damage is delicious. And if you get a forward grip compensator 4 times scope on it, or a 3.4 times scope, that thing is beautiful for popping domes. I can kill people so quickly at long ranges. It's my favorite long range weapon. And medium range, but it sucks at close quarters, so make sure you have a repeater. And how much do I sleep per night? If I go to sleep early, probably about 6 hours. If I go to sleep late, it's more like 8 or 9. <laughs> it's pretty awful. Eretic Fox asks, how many bar fights have you been in and did you win? Well, I just turned 21 this past Thursday, and I've never been to a bar before, so I've never been in a bar fight. So I'm going to say a whole bunch of bar fights, and I won every single one of them. Jombo56 asks, whoa, you're fucking white? I hope. Unless I've been lied to. Santa Records asks, do you think the Vanguard shield is balanced compared to the other faction abilities? No, I do not. But it is 
the main reason that it is not balanced is because it's not as situational as everything else. The Terran Republic have lockdown, which is really good when you're at a massive armor column and you just want to shell the crap out of the other team. The mag burner is really good if you want to run the hell away from stuff that's blowing up your butt. But the Vanguard, the second you get shot, if somebody is hitting you from behind, you can hit that shield, turn around, return fire, and more than likely win. If you're getting the jump on somebody or you're outnumbered, you can hit the shield and win. It's just retarded. If a light assault is throwing C4 on you, you hit the shield and win. That's why the April balance update is going to be pretty interesting. It's being changed from a completely full immunity to a damage resistant shield. Well, a damage absorption, but it's going to act much like the heavy assault's nanite mesh generator. Instead of F and then you get complete invulnerability, you'll have F and you'll have a damage shield, which I believe will absorb 8 thousand damage as a tentative number don't quote me on that but it'll be pretty neat because once that damage is exceeded the shield will turn off and then it starts to recharge that'll make it better but i think instead of with that nerf it'll bring it more in line and we just have to bring mag burn and lock down back up as well or just give the freaking every <laughs> every freaking faction all the abilities that would be a hell of a lot more fun Grape Gifter asks, How awkward do these questions make you feel, and what kind of underwear do you prefer? Boxers, briefs, hangs? This is extremely important. Well, since it is extremely important, these do not make me feel awkward at all. I'm talking into a webcam with a microphone. <laughs> I also did a bunch of uh, on-stage stuff before, so I don't get awkward by stuff really, really hard. That's not the word I was looking for. But what do I prefer? Boxer briefs, actually. Yep. Rune Penrod asks, do you ever consider joining a large outfit at some point? I did, and I got burned for it. I joined the Iron Wolves a while ago, back when they were still big, and they were trying to be MLG, pro, pro elite crap. But eventually I got kicked out because my battle rank was too low, and I was bringing the average of the outfit down. So ever since then, I've been playing it solo, and I've been enjoying it. Jaeger Hayes asks, what is your gaming history? Do you prefer first-person shooters? I actually don't, oddly enough. My gaming history, I started off with Wave Race 64 for the Nintendo 64. That was the first rental back when Blockbuster was still a thing, and I've moved on since. The main big games when I was younger was Age of Mythology, which I'm so excited that they're doing an Age of Mythology Extended Edition on Steam, which should be coming out in May sometime? I think May 5th or so, which I'll be getting that. And then Half-Life 1. Half-Life 1 I played the crap out of, but not just because it was a first-person shooter. The, the modding scene for that was crazy. I actually played Master Sword Continued, a, a mod for it, which made it into an RPG, and I enjoyed the hell out of that. But ever since then, Battlefield 1942, Battlefield 2142, subsequently Battlefield 3, Planetside 2, Counter-Strike, all of them, <laughs> Team Fortress Classic, Team Fortress 2, uh, Firearms, Natural Selection, Natural Selection 2, you can see where I'm going with this. A lot of Half-Life mods is what I've pretty much played my entire life. So I guess I do gravitate more so toward first-person shooters since I'm, I know I'm good at it. That's what I know, except Counter-Strike. I suck at it because recoil in that game is stupid. But typically, I do like to play everything else. I would really like real-time strategy games, even though I'm terrible at them. Case in point, StarCraft 2. Toxic Emeralds asks, I'm probably not going to get in this video. Well, big surprise, buddy. You're here. John Hens asks, what is the music in the background? Click in the description. Everything that I put in the video is there. Alex Chapman asks, are you excited for the new Godzilla film coming out on May 16th? Hell yeah, I am. That's going to be awesome. And it's even got freaking Walter White in it. So of course it's going to be great. He's going to be like selling meth while people are burning alive when Godzilla's running by and crap like that. And XM... Carol asks, EM6 or Gawsaw? How much easier is it to control EM6 compared to the Gawsaw? Well, the Gawsaw has 0.55 recoil vertical pull whenever you shoot it, and it has a 500 round per minute rate of fire, and the EM6 has 0.45 vertical recoil with 600 rounds per minute rate of fire, so they kind of balanced out. The EM6 has slightly less recoil, it's like minuscule. Well, 
per shot the EM6 is a lot less than the NC6, but since we go on the grander scale of things and compare recoil per minute, the EM6 has 270 compared to the Gossaw's 275, so make with it what you will. The EM6 is really fun, I prefer that as an all-arounder, but the NC6 cannot be topped at longer ranges. You just have to learn to fire in bursts of four or five shots, and the, the Gossaw is golden. Aspen Goodman asks, what is your favorite carbine and LMG in the game, and do you watch sports? If so, mention your favorite teams. My favorite carbine has got to be the Mercenary. I was doing a live stream of Zoran the other night where I got like 30 kills and one death with a Mercenary. Mercenary is just way too good. And my favorite LMG? Hmm. It would probably still have to be the Gossaw. The Gossaw or the M6. Probably hit more with the Gossaw. I just like the damage on that. And do you watch sports? Yes, I do. Dota 2 and StarCraft 2 are my favorite sports to watch. If so, mention your favorite teams. Either be Navi or Alliance for Dota 2, and Evil Geniuses is by far my favorite team on StarCraft 2. And finally, Razors asks, which state are you from? I live in Georgia, Southeast United States, Georgia. That's where I've grown up. That's where I live. That's all good. There you have it, you sexy beasts. I love every single one of you and hope you have a fantastic start to a new week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a big ass thumbs up. If you've got a question you want answered, go ahead and ask it in the comment section below, and I'll grab another handful to answer in next week's episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you uh, next week.